Well, would you get excited if you found rocks with spots? These spots on the rock make NASA giddy, a potential biosignature. Rocks with spots? Yeah, would you get excited? I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Actually, would you get even more excited if you found rocks with spots on Mars? Breaking news, this image could show life on Mars. This very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. This rock is now the best evidence we've ever had for ancient life on Mars. NASA found some rocks with spots on Mars and they got all excited and then there was this headline that NASA just discovered life on Mars. Over here, a pile of rocks waving at you. Here. Yeah, I'm actually a thing. I'm a being. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's an astrophysicist and a science communicator. Many people have heard him talking about the universe and so on. Sort of, you know, like Carl Sagan, uh, in a way. Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about this claim that NASA may have found evidence of life on Mars because they found rocks with spots. Presumably the fact that it's all in one place together indicates that the life was doing its thing. You know, the interesting thing, he then uh, interviewed one of his friends, an astrobiologist who was in NASA, and he said, have they found life on Mars? NASA just discovered life on Mars? What's up with that? And of course, the astrobiologist used terms like, well, they think it's possible and maybe, and well, we're not really sure. This is um, possible life on Mars billions of years ago. We're not talking about life on Mars today. Well, what happened? Well, we found this rock with these spots, and as we did analysis, there's some iron minerals there, and it could be, could be. This is a result of bacteria, and it's possible, and we don't know for sure. If we say NASA just found life on Mars, we're being a little bit, uh, getting out over our skis um, a, a little bit. Then the interesting thing is, after talking about these rocks with spots that may or may not be evidence of life, he then goes on to explain that, you know, this astrobiologist, that they could be formed other ways and it doesn't necessarily mean life. So the organics themselves don't tell you that there's life, but they still they get your attention. You go, okay, so that's interesting. Then after that, Neil deGrasse Tyson goes on and, and starts talking about... We have meteorites on Earth that were traceable to Mars. What you would need are stowaway microbes that some would then survive. They'd have to be very hardy to do so. So that would mean we would all be descendants of Martians. They started to get all excited about this and I think, wait a minute, they found some rocks with spots. I got a rock. They admit that it, it's not necessarily evidence of life, but now we're talking about because we found rocks with spots, this could be the life that came to Earth to seed life on Earth. By the way, have you noticed that a lot of these evolutionists always try to shift where life began from Earth somewhere else? They think that uh, they solved the problem. How did life originate on Earth? Oh, it came on a meteorite from Mars. Well, wait a minute. All they did was shift it to another planet, and there's no evidence of life on Mars. It's just amazing the sorts of things that they do here. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Well, actually, because Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying, well, those spots could be the result of bacterial activity supposedly billions of years ago billions and billions of years ago he said so that's just the evidence that they left if if they did come from bacteria okay so since this is basically bacterial excrement uh can we expect to possibly extract dna from it <laughs> in other words at one stage he says bacterial poop or something like that microbial poop is that what you want to call yes, it yes. <laughs> that, it's it's what's excreted after the microbes eat so they're sort of making uh making fun of all this. Then he talks about tardigrades. They're tiny little, almost microscopic organisms that seem to survive anything. And he said, maybe they came from Mars. And the hardiest microbes that we all know about and talk about, of course, is the tardigrade. Is that still a prime candidate for having stowed away on a rock from another planet? You know why they're so, so interested in trying to find life on another planet? Simply because they believe if life evolved on Earth, it had to evolve somewhere else. And they're desperate to find life on another planet. They don't believe Earth is special. They don't believe God created life here. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear, Psalm 115, verse 116, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth is for the sons of men. And then Psalm 19, the reason God created the heavens, the heavens declare the glory of God. So God created Earth first on day one, 
and that's the focus of his attention. He created the stars to declare the glory of God and his focus is upon Earth. So Neil deGrasse Tyson was on a, a Bill Maher program once and Bill Maher, well, I tell you, Bill Maher can't be trusted. He's a God hater. I mean, come on, God had a son. I mean, time out right there, God had a son? It was at a time when I had written an article that I didn't believe in life in outer space. I didn't believe there are aliens in outer space. And the reason, you know, I had a number of reasons. The earth is the focus of God's attention. The earth is where he created life. The heavens declare the glory of God and so on. And then I also used another reason and that is, I said, an understanding of the gospel precludes believing aliens in outer space because God's Son stepped into history to be Jesus Christ, the God-man, a descendant of Adam, to be one of the human family, to die for the descendants of Adam, and he remains a God-man to be our Savior forever. And I said, if there were aliens in outer space, some other you know, intelligent beings living on other planets or something like that, then they suffer from Adam's sin. The whole of creation groans because of sin. One day it's all going to be judged by fire and there's going to be new heavens and new earth, but only descendants of Adam can be saved uh, because God's son became the God man, not a God clean on or something like that. And so it's interesting, some atheists saw that article and then they started writing uh, articles saying, Ken Ham believes aliens are going to hell. Ken Ham says that NASA should stop looking for life in outer space because aliens are going to hell anyway and the gospel's not for them and so on. Of course, the whole point of my article was I didn't believe in aliens and I didn't say aliens are going to hell and I didn't say NASA should stop searching for things in outer space. The fake news. It's fake. Phony. Fake. So I want to say that on this program, Neil Grass Tyson was with Bill Maher and Bill Maher said, Creationist Ken Ham, who runs the Creation Museum, and said this week that we should call off the search for extraterrestrial life because aliens haven't heard the word of Jesus and thus are going to hell anyway. Must listen to this alternative point of view from Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's messed up. <laughs> but hey, what was messed up was what Bill Maher said. That's what was messed up. They'll believe anything. They'll believe life came from outer space. They'll believe there are aliens out there. They'll believe anything, but they don't want to believe there's a creator God who made us. Because that means he owns us. That means he sets the rules. That means he defines marriage because he created marriage. He defines a family because he created family. He defines gender because he created gender, male and female, at the beginning. That's why they don't want to believe in the true God of the Bible, because it also means he created them, he owns them, and that they're a sinner because we all sinned in Adam and we all need salvation and we all need to kneel before the Lord Jesus Christ and to repent of our sin and to put our faith and trust in him and believe what he did on the cross in dying for our sin and being raised from the dead and trusting him for salvation. Well, everyone has opinions and theories about extraterrestrial life, but what does God say in his word about it? Well, watch this video to find out.